ready to proceed. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us this evening to hear about our self-build challenge. My name is Carol and I'll be your MC for this evening. Please note this meeting is being recorded and as we are live broadcasting this, we will need all feedback from you to come to us via the Slido and please find the Slido link in the YouTube video description below. If you cannot hear or see our presentation properly, please let us know through Slido also. The first half of the evening will include an introduction from our Deputy Mayor Councillor Renison. Then Josephine, um, one of our officers here at Hackney, who will give you an overview of the challenge, what we're looking for, who is there, and what the restrictions will be. Then we will hear from Keong, who will give an overview and some information about the planning statement that was provided to help you uh, make best use of that. The second hour is really all about questions from you. Again, please check the description box below and use the Slido link to post any questions as we go along. Thank you. And now I am turning it over to Councillor Renison. Brilliant. Thanks, Carol. Uh, welcome to everyone that's joined us this evening. Um, it is still a very surreal experience in this new normal to do these events virtually. So let's hope this all goes to plan. Let's hope we give you the useful information you need. Um, I have with time and we're having tech issues today. Um, so the team have promised me that they will come in and interrupt if my signal starts to go and not just leave me sat here uh, talking to myself, which is again one of the surreal aspects of doing all these things uh, virtually. So fantastic to be here tonight. We have been, uh, I think they say, almost overwhelmed with the amount of interest we've had in the self-build challenge uh, since we launched it back in July now. We've had about 400 people have expressed an interest. Hopefully, a few of you are with us this evening. Uh, we have a chance to put your questions forward and find out a bit more um, about the challenge and how it's all going to work. So, as a cabinet member, I was just introduced myself fully at the start, shouldn't I? So, uh, Councillor Rebecca Renison, um, I'm Deputy Mayor and I'm cabinet member for Finance, How Do We Supply, which is a bit of a mouthful of a title as portfolio, portfolios go. Um, but hopefully quite self-explanatory. So I'm both responsible for how we help those in housing need in the borough. So that's how we help homeless families, those um, looking to get um, a council rent property, um, how we work with rough sleepers, uh, but also the housing supply. So what we do to try and bring forward as many new properties, new homes in the borough as possible. So with that role, I am obviously very, very aware of the lack of housing, particularly affordable housing for Hackney residents as a result of the housing crisis. Um, you'll hear us as a council talk about some of these figures uh, really regularly, but we've got over 13,000 households on our waiting list for social housing, council housing, and we've got 3,000 households living in temporary accommodation. Um, we've seen, again, you know, no news to anyone on, on the call tonight, but we've seen huge increases in house prices in recent years and likewise with private rents. And, and we know that finding an affordable place to call home is one of the biggest concerns of Hackney residents. Um, and this is obviously only sort of heightened with the, the impact of the coronavirus pandemic and home has never been more important than it is um, at the moment. So we know more needs to be done to meet the outstanding housing needs of Hackney residents um, and we're very keen here at Hackney to innovate and constantly look at new ways we can bring forward different housing um, different housing options here in the borough and indeed it was a manifesto commitment of us in 2018 that we'd explore models like self-build and we're also looking at community land trusts and how we bring those forward um, for local residents. So I obviously could not touch on some of the work that we're doing directly ourselves as a council to bring forward more housing. So we've got um, a cross subsidy model that helps us directly deliver um, new homes in the borough. So that will be delivering thousands of new homes by uh, 2022. And then we'll obviously start the next cycle of delivering that. And more than half of these will be uh, generally affordable. So that will be either council rent or they'll be intermediate, so shared ownership. Um, we're able to do this because we act as our own developer on our own land and we work with local residents um, and we finance it all by selling some of the properties we build, we sell them privately and that helps pay for those affordable properties um, and enables us to deliver the programme and even those we sell through 
sales, we, we, the ambition is to sell them to the local residents and meet in housing need here in the borough. Um, but we realise we can't fix this on our own, and it's about uh, both looking at more innovative solutions and the partners we work with. So we've got something called the Mayor's Housing Challenge Fund. This is something I could easily get quite technical on, so I'll try and keep it top level. But um, again, as people may or may not be aware, uh, so the council gets right to buy receipts when people exercise the right to buy, that money comes into the council. Um, but the government puts quite a few conditions on how we can use it. So they limit how much of it we can use towards new social housing and they put it towards new property. Um, and they put a time limit um, within which we have to use. And if we haven't spent it within that time frame, they, they take it basically. So we set up something called the Mayor's House Challenge Fund. And that basically works with housing associations to help them build more homes for uh, social rent here in the borough. Um, and those are properties the council can then uh, nominate for local residents and put them forward for. And it's a fantastic way of bringing forward more much needed social rent homes in the borough and ensuring we keep those right to buy receipts here in Hackney where they belong. We've also launched Hackney Living Rent. Um, and this is basically where rents are calculated based on a third of average local incomes um, rather than how private rents are calculated. And so it offers a much more affordable option. Um, I'm really delighted that we've just seen some of our first Hackney living rent residents move into their, their new homes. So it would also be wrong uh, to be talking about housing and what we do to develop housing in the borough if I didn't talk a bit about the work of our planning colleagues. So Hackney's local plan 2033 uh, was passed by Cabinet and Council uh, just earlier this summer in July. Um, it includes the fact that self-contained housing is the priority for residential land use in the borough. Um, and also the type of land use for which is the greatest, greatest need. Um, and also sort of flagging again that commitment to innovation in housing design. Uh, we're very proud that we've got um, award-winning schemes ourselves. Um, there's the need to focus on sustainability, and I'll come back to that a bit, uh, a bit more in a moment. Um, and the need to constantly look at housing innovation, and, and that's one of the things we hope this self-build challenge will be doing. Um, so as I touched on, we're sort of constantly looking at new ways we can bring forward new housing products. Um, you'll all be familiar by now, I'm assuming, of the, the plot of land at Balcorn Street. It's too small, really, for the council to build on ourselves. Um, so what we want to do is, rather than just sort of uh, um, uh, sell it or, or just leave it boarded up and unused, um, is bring it forward and use it for this self-build opportunity and hopefully turn what's currently um, a disused and overgrown site into something that is an opportunity for local households um, who may be struggling perhaps to stay in the borough um, or looking to return to the borough or you know various other factors um, and gives them a chance to get a foothold and, and get a secure home here here in Hackney. Um, also as I mentioned there's a chance for us to promote uh, sustainability in housing design and this is a key part of the self-build challenge. Um, again you might be aware but the council has declared a climate emergency um, and we're focusing on tackling climate change and achieving net zero emissions ourselves by 2040. We're therefore really hoping that the self-build challenge offers, uh, offers the opportunity um, for bidders to come forward and come forward with some quite innovative ideas about how they will deliver sustainable homes and what they will look like. Um, and you know, that can be everything from materials used, energy efficiency design, um, how to reduce the carbon footprint of the sort of build itself. Um, and we're quite excited to see what people come forward with. We're aware from lots of the engagement we have, how much innovation and how many ideas there are out there. Um, and this is a really fantastic chance to bring some of that to the fore and show what can be achieved. Um, and, and finally, just to touch on very briefly, and I don't want to sort of go over what officers will be coming to later on um, this evening, but uh, sort of a light touch on the criteria. Um, and what we really want to do with the self-build challenge um, is it's, it's focusing on those who might otherwise struggle to uh, afford to live in the borough in the longer term. And so therefore we've set some uh, criteria, and you can see already from Slido there's some questions about how those will work. Um, and that's why we're having tonight, so you can raise those questions and you know we can feed that into the information we're able to give you. Um, but we're, we, we're bringing forward the challenge for those that have got a local connection to Hackney, so that's people who are living, working or studying in the borough. It's focusing on those that have got Sort of a housing need um so not those who already own a home um and, and and we've sort of put an income cap in there um, of ninety thousand pounds 
Um, and that's really to try and bring it in line with, say, what we offer um, through shared ownership, which is a not sort of dissimilar, um, I hate that phrase product, but not dissimilar uh, product, if you like. So Hackney's building, we're going to continue to build homes ourselves. Um, but, you know, we realise we we can't fix the housing crisis on our own. And it is our duty for every opportunity, every innovation out there. Um, and self build is one of those. Um, and we are delighted that so many of you are interested. Um, I hope this evening is useful. Um, I have to offer a huge thank you to officers. This is a new thing we're bringing forward. It's taken a massive amount of work just to get us this far. So a huge, huge, huge thank you um, for all the work uh, they've done. And I suppose also a plea to yourselves to bear with us because we are bringing this forward as a new thing. So we will also be learning um, as we go. And yeah, I hope it's a useful evening and good luck to all of you who apply. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Emerson. Um, so my name is Josephine and I am one of the officers who has been working on this. And I just want to thank everyone who's taken the time to express their interest, send an email to us, uh, post a question on Slido, or watch this on YouTube. We really appreciate it. Um, my job tonight is just going to be to walk you through the challenge as, as it has been put out and just to kind of clarify, we've put a lot of information on the web page and we've also emailed it to you. Um, and so my job is just to walk you through that and clarify the points we can um, before then turning over to Kyung in planning. So let me get started with that. I've got a, a presentation. One second, okay, and then I'll do present. Um, Council Renison went over the kind of context for this challenge, um, so I don't think I need to go over it uh, too much, but just to kind of give you an idea of, of where we were coming from, um, some of our objectives for, the, for this challenge. The first one was to ensure that this asset is going to be used for housing and not for profit. So later in the presentation, you'll see some of the restrictions we put on the site. And I think it's just really helpful to kind of explain up front that the reason we've done those restrictions is because we're not trying to kind of offer a site um, that could be developed and then flipped for profit. We really like it to be used to, to um, be a home for somebody who has a local connection. Um, the second objective is to provide a resident or a household with an opportunity to build their own home, develop their skills, provide employment opportunities locally, and to create an innovative housing solution. Uh, as Councilor Renison said, this is a pilot, so um, we'll have to bear with us. We haven't done this before. But the objective is, is that we would really love someone to be able to, to build their own home, which we know there's a huge desire for here in the borough. Um, we've, we've, we've seen that through the interest in this challenge. Um, and then the third objective is to test out our pilot and, and then to see if, if maybe future sites could be brought forward in this way. So um, hopefully, hopefully that'll go well. Um, so this is just a bit of information about the site. You probably have already seen this if you read through the documents, but this is a picture of the site. Um, uh, it has a PTAL of four, so that's just kind of how we judge um, the location in terms of connectivity to public transport. So it's, it's connected to the London Fields Overground and several bus stops nearby. Um, and just to clarify, there have been a lot of questions because we initially uh, were confusing about the size of the site. It's approximately 123 square meters. Um, and it's at the end uh, of a row of Georgian Terrace properties. Um, I think we originally thought that it was a throughway, uh, but if you look at the topographical survey, they, uh, they believe that there was a house a long, long time ago. Um, so that is the site. And you'll see that there are some mature trees, which I'm sure Kim will tell you more about. Um, and so this is a bit, this is what everyone's kind of, most people have emailed about and they've asked about the eligibility. Uh, so you probably will have already seen this, um, household income under 90,000. This means if you are an individual uh, who's applying um, alone and you'd be the only person on the title and the only person on the mortgage, that your income is under 90,000. If you are a couple, it means that both of you would go on the mortgage and the title, that your combined income annually is under 90,000. 
Uh, and that is something, as Councillor Renison said, that was set by the, the Greater London Authority. Um, housing need, again, we really want this to be targeted towards households who don't already own their own home. Um, we do recognize that those who own their own home might be financially more able to do self-build. However, um, we, we really want to see what's possible and we, we, think, we think it will be possible for a household to build their own home um, if, if in housing need. And then the third criteria is local connection. Um, so we worked with housing benefits and needs to kind of make sure that we were synced up on this. So um, yeah, a household or an individual who lives or works in Hackney uh, for the past year um, or has a, a connection with Hackney through immediate family associations so have a minimum of three years of residency prior to the application. Um, so yeah, feel free to clarify in Slido if, if that's not clear, uh, but we've tried to make it pretty explicit. Um, you've probably already seen the application form because I emailed it. Uh, however, if not, it's on, it's on the self-build page. Um, and the deadline for applications is December the 15th. I'm just going to walk you through what the application will ask you now. And I'm going to try to be as helpful as possible in explaining what we are looking for um, in each of these questions. As you'll see, it's a pretty simple form. Um, but there are a lot of details that uh, would be good for you to include. So the first one is uh, just a basic question about your current housing needs and why you're applying and what makes you want to build your own home. This question isn't being scored. It's uh, to make sure that you are eligible and also to give us just some context as to your current situation. Um, if you were to be shortlisted, we would want to know these details. So we just thought we'd ask them up front. But again, it won't be scored. The second question will be scored. Uh, and this is really about finance. So the cost that you anticipate incurring and the income that you and your any co-applicants have and basically how you intend to fund the project. So this is basically where we would want to see a costing of, of what you think it'll cost to build your own home. So you could choose a kit home, which might be you know, um, on the lower end, or you could choose a kind of very traditional build uh, model, which would be on the higher end. So we just want to make sure that you've costed out your project in, you know, the more detail the better, and that you have the financial resources to pay for that build, um, probably through a self-built mortgage, and also that you could um, afford the other costs that you anticipate or that we've explicitly told you you will need. Um, we've been speaking to lenders, to self-build lenders, and we do believe that lenders will be able to, to loan against this, um, this project. So we, we would love for you to have conversation with self-build um, lenders and to show us the results of those, of those conversations. Um, that, would, that would constitute a strong uh, response to this question. Okay, um, so, so this question three is about uh, your design. Uh, your design approach. So you don't actually have to have a completely fully designed home, but we do want to have an idea of what the floor plan will be that you're projecting, um, the kind of materials that you intend to use, the construction method that you intend to use, um, how you will ensure that it's a high quality design, and how, how your design will fit with both your household's needs and also within the local area. So taking into consideration the design context and how you think your home will fit that. So that's um, what we're looking for. There are more details on the webpage about um, the submissions of art, uh, who someone from our design team kindly provided. Um, so if you, if you wanna know what kind of um, drawings to submit, they, the details are, are on the application form. Question four is about how your project will be energy efficient, sustainable, and, and or environmentally friendly. Um, this is a priority for our Hackney Council, and uh, we, we'd love to see how you're thinking about it. So whether it's reusing um, certain kinds of materials or sourcing things that will have a low carbon footprint, uh, using solar panels, whatever you think, um, your project would would benefit from and you can make you can make happen we we want to hear about it so um this this will be scored 
and part of it. And then question five, this is, um, this is about risks. So we do recognize that soft build is a risky, riskier option perhaps than buying off, uh, off the market um, typically uh, because things can, can go wrong. Um, so we want to make sure that you understand what those risks are the same way that we kind of understand what those risks are and that you have some kind of thoughts around how you could mitigate those risks. So uh, kind of the more, the more thorough you can be, the better, I would say, with this one. The more you can kind of think of everything that could possibly go wrong, um, that, would, that would make for a strong, a strong response. Um, and then the final question is about how your project will contribute to the local economy. So whether this is, you know, you work in Hackney and you'll be able to stay in Hackney long term, or you'll be employing um, tradespeople who are local to the area, which, which would be positive, or you'll be sourcing materials that are local to the area. How, how you're going to um, kind of make sure that uh, the benefits of the project don't just stop and end with the house. That, that would contribute to a strong response. So those are the questions. Um, and now I'm kind of unceremoniously jumping into the restrictions. Um, the first thing to make you aware of is that we, we recognize that self-build um, is a lot of responsibility, but it also is within, within the name of self-build. And we, we do intend for the applicant to take on quite a few responsibilities as they would with any self-build project. Um, so some of those are obtaining planning permission, getting services connected to your home, preparing the site for construction, uh, getting your plans approved by building control, um, and building and building your home. So those are things that the council will not be uh, assisting with. I mean, as far as planning permission, we, we've provided the planning statement, which Kim will speak more about as a way to kind of demystify um, what would be appropriate for the site, but you will be responsible for obtaining planning permission, the same as you would if you, you know, bought the site at auction. Um, same with getting services connected. We've, we've provided the surveys, but you would have to contact all the different utility companies and, and get that done yourself. Um, same as preparing the site for instruction and uh, eventually submitting your plans to building control. So, um, and the council will not be, will not be building the home uh, for you, you would be responsible for, for the self-build. Um, so that's one part of the restrictions and conditions. Um, the second is the funding. So uh, a, you would have to also fund the planning permission, preparing the site, setting up the services, building control, construction of the home. We assume that um, our applicants will, because of the financial limitations, will all uh, apply for a self-build mortgage. So um, there will be different rules about how much funding you actually have to put in when you speak to the lenders. Um, so you know you may not have to. Act, you probably would not have to pay for the entire construction of the home. Most likely, uh, you will get a mortgage for that. And then your housing costs during construction. Um, so depending on the different type of build you go for, you choose. You know you may not actually be able to live in the house for one to two years. Uh, so how how you will um, you know where you will live and how you fund that during construction. We uh, we just want to make you aware that that will be a responsibility of yours. Um, and then the restrictions on the site. So the way that we've structured this is has basically been to reduce the price of the land as much as possible so that you can really focus on funding the building of your home. That's, that's kind of the, the logic behind this. So initially, um, once a self-builder is selected through the application process, uh, we will sign a contract with you, which you'd have to pay 5,000 pounds to kind of enter into that contract with us. Um, and in exchange for that, you will become a 10% owner of, um, you'll go, you know, you'll, set, you'll enter into a contract with us, then once you get planning permission, we will cost the value of the site with planning permission and you'll have to pay us 10% of that value, um, and in exchange you'll get 10% of the freehold. However, upon completion of your home, your 10% will automatically go up to 60%. You will own 60% of the home and the land, and we will own 40% of the home and the land freehold. Um, 
And if you have questions about that, we, we thankfully invited our legal team to, to join tonight. Um, the council and the self-builder will be tenants in common, which means the self-builder will need to offer the site to the council first when selling, and the council will have the right to find a buyer, and only with the council's permission can the site be sold. So that basically means that when you're ready to sell, you come to us first and you say, do you want to buy it? And if not, uh, if we don't want to buy it from you, then what we will most likely do is, is try to find another buyer who meets the same criteria that we set out for this challenge to be the purchaser of 60%. Um, and the reason we want to do that is so that we can keep the house as an asset in, uh, indefinitely for someone who's in housing need, who meets the same criteria as you, as you do. Um, so, so those are some of the restrictions. Again, unceremoniously, um, the timeline for the challenge, um, you'll see tonight's the launch, you're here. Uh, the, next, um, the next milestone for us is uh, requests for clarification. So if you have any questions that aren't answered tonight, um, because, you know, we don't have time to go through, through uh, them all tonight, then please email them into the, the self-build at hackney.gov.uk, um, which you'll see on the webpage, that email address by October 5th. And what we'll do is we'll take all of those questions at one time, we'll provide answers all at one time on around October 19th, it might be a bit earlier, um, but we'll send them all to you so everyone is clear um, on the answers to those questions. But if you have questions, send them in by October 5th and we'll get them answered. And then um, November 9th, we are planning to have another event just to touch base if there's any further questions, if people, once they're kind of in the application process, if they have things they want to clarify, that's the purpose of that event. Um, bids are due December 15th. We are going to shortlist and announce in February of 2021. And then we're going to shortlist, we're thinking three, and then we are going to um, interview bidders. Um, so that's basically an opportunity for us to meet you in person and ask questions. These are the three shortlisted finalists to ask questions and to kind of sound out your plans and see where you're at see if you know maybe you've had a discussion with the lender maybe that's progressed by by february um so that's why we're kind of doing that iterative process um and then we will select one one winner out of that um and that will be announced in may okay um i am now going to exit uh i'm gonna stop sharing and go back into here Sorry, uh, Josephine, can you share again? Yeah, can I share can that? share again. Hold on. Right. Um, but anyways, I just want to say thank you. And I am now going to turn it over. Well, as soon as I can figure out how to share again, I am now going to turn it over to Kian. OK, there we go. Okay, uh, thank you, Josephine. Uh, as Josephine said, uh, uh, I'm Kion, I'm from the uh, planning policy team, and uh, we help our colleagues by uh, drafting this planning statement. Just to uh, clarify right at the beginning, what Josephine said was uh, the actual site itself is uh, 123 square meters. Um, the dimensions are six point, it's rectangular in shape, uh, 6.5 by uh, 6.5 meters by 19. So uh, that's just a clarification for an error in the original planning statement. Okay, the, uh, the statement itself is a very high level um, uh, sheet uh, setting out the context uh, of uh, national, regional, and local support for the self will principle itself. Uh, and then, and then we go on to a little bit about the the design and the planning policies uh, that we uh, taking into consideration. Uh, we we set out what's up, what's around the site. You know, it's purely residential around there. There is a school just a little bit further down Balcon Road, but uh, all the um, yeah the surrounding area is uh, residential. So um, you know, re uh, residential uh, residential in principle from planning. It, is um well is a given uh and hence the challenge and the suitability of this site for uh for the self-built challenge uh 
within the uh, the statement itself, we go into a little bit of detail about the the sort of standards. It's more like a signpost to uh, other documents, and uh, the main ones that we we would consider is uh, the, the local plan. This councillor Rinson said earlier, uh, local plan 20, 2033, which is recently adopted, and the main issues I think for this site at this stage will be, uh, or when it comes to planning, will be about design of the site, uh, the immunity and impact on the surrounding areas, and the actual quality of the development itself. Uh, we will be looking at minimum standards, which are set out in the London plan, uh, and there is a table, it's a specific table in the London plan, which sets out the minimum gross internal space standards, and then there are standards around storage, minimum uh, bedroom sizes, and then uh, 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 private immunity space uh, gardens, basically. Uh, so, uh, uh, so that's what the uh, the plan is. Uh, I mean, the statement is about uh, what uh, what the process is for obtaining plan permission. Um, well, at this stage, as Jasmine said, it's uh, May twenty one is when the actual application uh, is when the, the selfie challenge is awarded to a winner so uh, you wouldn't need planning permit full planning permission until after that stage uh, but uh, at the moment yeah you need to submit a full planning application the uh, the statement sets out the the main drawings that are needed uh, it it, I think it will probably be beyond the the self challenge drawings, which is talking about floor plans and that. Uh, but for a planning permission, you will need uh, architectural level uh, or architectural uh, architectural standard drawings to get both the planning permission and the building control. Uh, usually, we find that an applicant will send one set in, which will cover both. Uh, I know two. Two different processes, plan permission and building control, are, are related, but we are separate exercises. Uh, so that's the planning, that's obtaining the form plan permission. The council does offer uh, something called the pre application service. Now, uh, whether you want to um, sign up for that, it, it does cost, uh, and the, uh, whether you want to sign up for that to meet. The, the criteria of the self-build challenge, you know, I can't, not, I can't say yes or no to you for that. It depends on, I think, your your level of, of understanding uh, of, the, of the process. But I don't think to sure, enter the, the self-build challenge itself, you may not possibly need that. Obviously, we're here to answer any more technical questions that you have in planning. Uh, cost terms, uh, apart from the, the fees itself, the initial cost, I would say, at the moment, will be the uh, the drawings. Uh, you don't need architectural level uh, for the self build challenge. If, if, uh, if you're not confident in your own technical drawings, I think a skilled draft person will be able to do drawings to, uh, for you. Uh, the other main cost, immediate cost, I will say, with this site is. The, the mature trees. Uh, there is a group of um, mature sycamores right on the bottom right hand side of the site. Now we don't know how deep those roots go or whether they actually spread into the site. So they may need further investigation. You may want to have a chat with our uh, arboriculturalist. The council does have a couple of arboriculturalists who can give you advice about uh, the trees themselves. Now those trees have not been TPO'd, so therefore we were. Uh, if it comes to, we don't want to lose those mature trees, but if it comes to then uh, we can contemplate the loss of those trees. But we will be seeking some sort of com uh, mitigation measure. It may be uh, funding the uh, planting of another tree, uh, another tree, uh, and then. Um, and then final, uh, yeah, another cost may be, depends on the uh, the application itself, we may require daylight sunlight uh, work because you're off pretty close to uh, others, uh, other residential. You're looking onto the back of 
overlooking the back of some uh, some gardens, and there is a school at the very back of the site. So you may there may be some overlooking and uh, daylight sunlight issues that we have to consider. And then uh, all the information uh, from, from a planning perspective, the main information will be from our, our website. There, there's also on our website the validation checklist that will set out uh, precisely the type of plans that we would, uh, the drawings that we will need and then need submission. And one of, one of the things that uh, Hackney does require for planning applications is a design and access statement. Uh, this is, well, it could be a novel, it could be a, a few paragraphs. For something like this, it shouldn't be too, uh, too big <laughs> uh, or too long. Uh, it will, uh, it will, do, you'll be talking about uh, your your thinking behind your design, and it will also address the issues that that's the. Uh, Renison and Josephine talked about earlier mitigation, oh, sorry, uh, climate change, how your site helps, you know, uh, increase energy efficiency, reduce carbon emission, uh, reducing resource and uh, water, water waste, and then uh, biodiversity and urban greening. So it's, uh, it's that sort of level. And we do have a, what we call a supplementary planning guidance on our yeah, in the planning pages, it's the uh, Sustainable Construction and Design SPD that was adopted in uh, 2016, and that is a helpful guide to well introduction to what kind of things that the council is looking for. We also got a uh, a uh, well a uh, sustainability officer who can give you more technical advice if need be. As uh, they uh, all the information is on our website. And I think that's it from me, Josephine. Is that so okay? good? Great. Thank you. I'm just going to turn it back over to Carol because I think it might be time for questions. Yes. Hello. Hi, everyone. So I'm just going to go through the questions that we've had that come through the Slido and our officers will answer the questions that are related to their area of work. So we had a few questions on local connection. Um, so could you please clarify what the local connection entails? I'm guessing that's me. Um, with the local connection, it's, it's pretty much exactly what is written there. So if you live or work or, as Councillor Renison said, study in the borough and you have done for the past year, uh, then you are, you know, for at least one year, then, then you're eligible that way. Um, the other, and, and I, we had some questions about if one person has a local connection and the other doesn't, yes, that would, that would be, that would, that would constitute a local connection. Um, and then the other situation that I think we've been asked about is about historical a connection to the borough. So if you have immediate family who have been living in the borough for the past, in the, in the most recent three years when you apply, then that counts. If you used to live in Hackney, you know, 15 years ago, but were priced out of the borough, that unfortunately does, doesn't count. Um, and just to say that these local connection rules are based uh, very much on our discussions with housing benefits and needs. So we've tried to join them up with what our local connections are elsewhere in the borough, I mean, elsewhere in the council. Um, so that is, I think, that, I think I've covered what local connection is. Yes. Yeah. Um, another question, can the land be valued ahead of the application so we know how much it will be? Who's it going to? Georgia? Mm -hmm. Georgia's muted. I'll jump in. I'll jump in. Um, the land can't be valued before. And the reason the land can't be valued is because we don't know what you're going to build. So the land's going to be valued once planning permission is obtained. And so it's a combination of the value of the land as it is now, plus the self builder's proposal. So, you know, you could propose a, um, you know, eco home that is you know, on the very low end of construction costs, and then that, that would be a completely different value to if you go like high spec, you know, 
there are different methods of construction and there are different designs that will have a different value. So um, we could have, um, you, could, you could find an estimate uh, through some research, but no, we don't, we don't know what it will be worth because we don't know what's going to be designed to be built there. Okay. And um, how many other plots in Hackney might be available through this scheme in the future? This, this is me again. Um, we don't know to be to be totally transparent. Um, we have looked at a few other small sites, which we have uh, we brought forward this one, um, and there are a few others that we have in mind that might be uh, the same kind of situation as this one, meaning they're about the same size. Uh, it wouldn't make sense for the council to develop them ourselves. Um, so. I, I'm going to kind of say a handful, but again, we don't know. We're, we're going through a process of reviewing our assets now. Um, so hopefully by the time that we announce a winner, um, we can kind of be more clear with those who have been shortlisted and other interested parties about what the pipeline might look like in the future. Okay. Um, will the legal documents be posted on the council website? Yes. Um, my understanding is that they were, so I'll check on that. But yes, they, they will all be um, posted. And I know that th we've also posted the site uh, through the GLA Small Sites Program, and I believe um, that all the legal documents are uploaded there as well. Okay. And we've also had a few questions on the ownership of the land. So um, once the once the property is built, Sorry, so once the property is built, um, will the council own the freehold of the land or is there a 40-60 split? There's a 40-60 split and we will both own the free, the council and the self-builder will both own the freehold, uh, but there will be a split of 60-40, the self-builder self owning 60 and the council owning 40. Um, the reason that we did that was that we, what we, what we really didn't want to have happen was that somebody came, built a home that we were kind of enabling uh, them to do so at a discounted price and then just sold it and um, then, you know, used it as a profit making exercise. So the reason that the 60-40 split is there is so that we can kind of maintain it as an asset in perpetuity um, and to, to make sure that the person who is kind of looking to build their own home is really doing so because they want uh, a home. There was also, I think, another question um, about the 60-40 split, and the question was if we would require uh, rent to be paid on the 40%, and the answer is no. Unlike shared ownership, we would not require any rent to be paid, so if you uh, build your own home, you're, you're, you're done, you're done with, with paying for things. Um, is it possible for two households to apply jointly? i.e. we plan to build two units, one for each household? Yes, uh, it is possible. Um, we have gotten um, our design team to kind of look at the feasibility of, of building two flats. It is possible. It would be a tight squeeze. Um, so we haven't kind of promoted it as such uh, because we do recognize that it, 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 may, be, um, it may be tight. But, but yes, uh, as long as the applicants can meet the criteria. Um, so in, in, a, in a couple situation, we would want at least one of each household to be having the local connection. We'd expect both households to meet the, um, their, their income under 90,000. Um, and we'll have to work out maybe a couple more details uh, going forward because the, the, the challenge has mostly been designed for a individual or a household, not two sets of um, so we might have to kind of work out some of it, but yes, it is possible to apply that way. And who should be on the application form if one person is a British citizen and the other is on a spousal visa? So uh, we don't have restrictions on um, nationality. Uh, if you can get a self build mortgage, um, then we are happy for, you know, if your name is going to go on the mortgage and your name is going to go on the title, then we want you to be on the application. Um, but we don't have any any restrictions around nationality for this challenge, so uh, both of you. Okay. 
Um, how many people will be selected for the interview stage? So we're thinking three shortlisted. However, again, this is a pilot and it depends if we have absolutely, you know, incredible, we've got five incredible applications and um, we, we, we think that we need more than we could maybe change that number. But I think we're thinking three shortlisted applicants. Okay. And will you provide any help with mortgages? So we cannot uh, recommend any mortgage providers or lenders. Uh, we that's that's kind of a conflict of interest for us. However, we can signpost. Um, I have spoken to people from the Build Store, which is a panel of lenders. So they don't they're not one lender; they represent a panel, um, and they are speaking to lenders now about this challenge and seeing which ones may or may not be interested. Um, so we we cannot connect you to lenders, but we can provide resources, which we will do on on the self build web page to kind of give you some ideas of where you might go to, to look, but we can't recommend, um, we can only kind of just signpost for information that, that will kind of be on, on the applicants. Um, are there any restrictions in terms of the materials we can use? I am not the right person to ask. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> I mean, from a planning point of view, uh the more sustainable the, the better uh say so climate climate friendly material will be fine uh, what we all assess on is how it sits within the site and how it relates to the surrounding buildings uh so you know we wouldn't discount something like a timber clad building uh i think in the plan brief itself um I mean, the, the planning statement itself, there are some images of uh, infill sites around the borough that have been approved. So, uh, you know, innovative and traditional, it's a fine balance that you've got to sort of meet. And so there are no restrictions. Sorry, it's a long way of saying no, there is not a restriction. <laughs> um, will you give priority to bidders with higher income? No. Would it be possible for the winner to build a house extension in the future? As long as they get paid. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, I mean, it depends on what they, uh, what we approve in the first place or not approve. Uh, but at this stage, we don't, we don't tend to limit people's permitted development rights. But it all depends uh, on what is actually uh, the final scheme, basically, that is approved. Um, assuming all applicants have a local connection with Hackney as required, is there a preference for applicants who are families with children? So um, I think the simple answer is is no. We um, have we will we as you can kind of see from the scoring criteria. There's a whole sheet that kind of tells you how each question is weighted. Um, so I would just refer people to to look at that. Um, but yeah, we've we've gotten people from the borough who have said you know we're older and we want to have we have a little connection or we're really in housing need or so there. You know I think there are lots of different circumstances that um, that we would we want to hear about and would be equally of, of interest to us. Hi there, are you going to add a topographic survey to the website? I thought we did, but yeah, yes, yes. Is it expected that the property will be freestanding, i.e. not attached to the neighbouring house? Um. Not from a planning perspective. Uh, obviously, there are things about party walls uh, that may be taken into consideration, but no, not at this moment. There's no restrictions. Are the local community on board with the scheme and and aware of the potential disruption during construction? That's a great question. Um, we sent out a letter to couple hundred residents in the nearby area to let them know that this was happening. Uh, we did not hear from very many, uh, but 
we have heard from a few who are actually very supportive and happy to see the site being used to provide housing um, because they know that Hackney is an area of, of high housing need. So, so far, uh, so far, so good. Uh, but in the letter that we sent out, we did say that there obviously will be noises due to construction and that we just wanted to make everyone aware and that they would be able to comment on planning. Um, so, so far, so far, so good. And will the council slash planning officer work with the applicant and make recommendations if there are issues at the planning stage? Uh, that's why we we suggest a pre-application service. Uh, we, uh, if someone comes in with some level, uh, some design, we can feed back to them. You know, if someone comes in with, say, just for example, a five-story. We can maybe go back to them and say, no, five stories not acceptable in this area, in this area, or if they cover ninety percent of the site in a building, you know, we we can uh, we can advise them that way, but we we can't design a scheme for for them, and you know, by the time they've gone through the various process of the challenge itself, we hope they have a scheme that is hopefully uh, you know, without preempting the planning decision. That'll be hopefully acceptable in planning terms. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've got a question that says, what does it mean to develop their skills in terms of objectives? Does this also mean business owners in relation to employment will be favoured? Um, so again, you know, your background won't necessarily be, as long as you're eligible, your background won't really be weighted more heavily than somebody else's background for the challenge. It'll be about your answers to the questions. Um, but in terms of develop your skills, if you go through with a self-build um, from the research that us as officers, as we have done for the past year and a half, you know, you will, you will learn a lot about uh, surveying and site preparation and development, quite honestly, on a very small scale, but still development and housing design and materials and so many different things. Um, and I think our, our intention in writing that was that we anticipate that through the through this challenge, whomever is successful will end up being more knowledgeable at the end of the process than they were at the beginning of the process. So we mean we mean your skills that you would develop through the challenge. Can you please share the list of self-build lenders you spoke to? Uh, so I, I spoke to someone from the build store, which again is a is a panel of lenders. Um, and again, we can't recommend them, but you may check out their website. Is the 123 meter square the total footprint of land allowed to be built on? Is this inclusive slash exclusive of land that might need to constitute the garden? Uh, 123 is the whole site. You can. We will want a garden space. You cannot cover the whole hundred and twenty three in a in a building, basically. That is your whole plot. Okay. Is it possible to build higher than the neighbouring house? Uh, it is possible, but you know, uh, but we want something that will fit in with the surrounding areas. There, the building immediately adjacent to it, although it's a two uh, it's a two story, it's quite a high two story, it's a Georgian two story, while opposite the site themselves there are modern two story buildings, probably eighties or nineties, which are much lower. So, you know, uh, you can't say no, but we're not expecting a tower block there. Well, a tower block is not gonna get a planning get planning approval on that site. So uh, so yes, you can go higher. <laughs> that feeds into my next question. What happens if the winning scheme doesn't get granted planning permission? Will the winner have time to adjust accordingly to suit the planning requirements? Uh, I mean, I'd, I can't speak on behalf of uh, my housing colleagues, but from a planning perspective, uh, we will sort of work with the applicant to say, you know, what what he, you know, what we think is uh, acceptable and try and get 
uh, planning approved. Uh, obviously, you know, we're talking about May time, and uh, the applicants would have done a lot of work before then. They would have gone through probably various iterations of their of their design. So hopefully, you know, we can always advise our, our housing colleagues to see, uh, you know, what what is acceptable and what is not, you know, without preempting any decision and the and the and the uh, challenge itself. Um, will the number of people the project can house be a consideration? Can we build more than one property on the land? Um, I think again, we the maximum that we could see fitting there is two units, and again, that has to be done kind of with some some creativity because of the the restriction of the site. Um, we would want people to meet with uh, with our own standards of um, there's London space standards, so they'd have to comply with that. And we would, I think, take into consideration if overcrowding were likely. Um, on such a small space that that would be considered an issue, but not necessarily something that would be um, brought out in the scoring criteria, if that makes sense. That would be something to kind of later on down the road, but we wouldn't want to see overcrowding. Um, do you need to see finished plans, elevations, materials, or would images of some design precedents with a rough idea of the layout be acceptable? A rough idea of the layout, materials, and designs would would be acceptable. I suppose the one thing that I would recommend is having an idea of how the home would be constructed because you're going to have to do that in order to answer the second question which is about costing. So you know just through the costing process of looking at different um, options for developing, um, it, those two questions are kind of linked if that makes sense, design and also the cost. So uh, if, if it's detailed enough to get costs, then I think that that would be um, a great starting point for the design question as well. Okay. Um, given the current climate, if someone can demonstrate a recent previous income but has recently found themselves out of employment, can they still apply? If they feel that they can meet and can get uh, the mortgage, then yeah, we're not going to penalise people for that. Can you confirm if Hackney are phasing out CLT construction? I'm not really sure who the right person to answer this is. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, no, uh, we can't make a statement like that. If we get an application in, we will assess it. It's uh, cross laminated in, but we will assess it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I work in policy, so I'm not too okay favor with the type of applications that we are getting in. I am here, I, I'm using cross laminated in, but uh but there is no pol planning policy saying no uh, across uh, clt is a definite no so um, can proposed costs be approximate they can be uh, and they can be whatever i mean you know you could you could do it now and say this is this is how much i think it'll cost i suppose it's the difference between submitting an answer and submitting a strong answer so a stronger answer would be something that has been researched where you can say, based on having conversations with this company and this floor plan, um, this is what we think, and these materials, this is what we think the cost will be. Uh, so yes, you, could, you can estimate it, but we would just want to then note that that estimate, um, well, we, I mean, you, you, can, you can do it however, but it would be a stronger answer if it if it's kind of shows that it's been researched. Um, so, if a person is successful, would they be able to purchase the whole house before retirement, let's say in 20 years' time? I mean, the, the goal, we, we can't really say, I'm sure in 20 years' time we may no longer be officers and we, it's hard to know exactly what the priority of the council will be in 20 years. However, as it is today, our intention is that this home will always be in perpetuity something that we can offer to applicants like the applicants that we've selected now so we are we are hoping to not um, again sell the 40 percent that we own um, in order to make it uh, to basically lose it completely as an asset that we could use for someone in housing need we'd like to maintain it
Um, what are what is the criteria regarding not owning your property? Does this include outside the UK? It's a good question. Um, yes, yes. The, the the whole purpose of of us saying we don't want you to already own a home is that we've, as Councillor Renison said, we have thirteen thousand people who are on a waiting list for social housing in Hackney. We have three thousand families living in temporary accommodation. If we have any assets, we really do want to use them as much as possible to house those who need a home. So if you already own a home someplace else and could sell it and then buy a home, or if you just already, already own a home, then, then that would, this would be more of a nice to have than something that you actually need. And our intention with designing the challenge is that it actually provides a home for someone who needs it. Um, do you have structural information about the neighboring wall? We have what's available in the top topographical survey. Um, so I would, it's, it's quite a detailed survey and I would encourage uh, the person who asked that to, to refer to it and take the time to look at it. I'm unfortunately not skilled in that area, but um, I believe that it should cover that. Yeah. I don't own a home, but my girlfriend does. Am I still eligible to enter the competition? If your girlfriend would live with you and be on the mortgage, and be on or be on the uh, title, then no. But if, um, yeah, so if, if you're planning to enter as a joint applicant, uh, then, then no. Are there requirements for the size of the garden? So, uh, from a planning perspective, not really. We do have a standard set in our local plan of 14 square metres per person, but we know that's quite unrealistic. What we're looking for is a, a usable garden space. Uh, yeah, basically. Uh, and then uh, I think uh, any first applicant needs to probably look at the, the GLA's urban green factor, which Hackney supports, which is about um sort of green coverage on the site itself it could be uh a living wall living roof uh a suds uh and any sort of planting so uh so that in terms of quantity not strictly but there is there is a requirement for a garden a usable garden um, and car parking does not count as garden space or open space by the way Although we would not encourage car parking on the site or stop. Does the council in the future for unforeseen circumstances could ask to reappropriate the land? I'm not totally sure I understand the question, um, but I can't imagine any circumstances in which the council would, would ask to reappropriate the land. I don't know. If, does anyone else have any? No, I can't imagine. I mean, no, it's not on an estate that is going to be regenerated or anything. So no. Um, oh, do I need to have registered interest prior to submitting an application? No, we did that. We did that just to make sure that we. Uh, so basically, we created a mailing list that was from everyone who's on our self build register and everyone who expressed an interest and we created a, a long mailing list so that way we could make sure that we sent them all the relevant details that they were made aware of this event uh, but that information is not going to be used and cross-referenced for the other part of the application it was just for um, to make sure we communicated with you would nhbc certification or similar be required yeah yes yeah, uh, depending on who the um, lender is at the time, um, which is the most important thing, then their certification of, uh, not the lender, but there would be a kind of warranty that would be required for building control, etc. So that would all be done in line with your lender. And um, I would also suggest that people speak with a lawyer or solicitor on some of the ramifications of the legal documents that have been posted on this um, website before look before going into it 
um, fully. Somebody asked, I didn't understand the other question. What is CLT construction, please? If you could just summarize the CLT uh, construction. Uh, CLT is cross laminated timber. <laughs> it's basically wooden, uh, wooden. It's a building material. Uh, I mean, I'm not an architect. I don't know fully what the benefits and disbenefits of uh, cross laminated timber over something like uh, brick or steel. But uh, it is a building to you, of course. That's what it stands for. Okay. Um, how big should the application be? I.e., how many pages, including drawings and answers to questions? We don't. We don't actually have a limit. We don't have any idea of how long it'll be because there will be several pages. You know, um, in in an ideal application, there would be some information about your finances, so potentially a mortgage and principal. Um, for the financial one, then there'd be several different pages that would go with the design question. Uh, and then, you know, there could be, it, it could be quite long. Um, it's going to all be, as long as you can email it in, you know, we don't really have any limits on it. And I would just say, um, the more fully you answer the questions, probably the, the better. Uh, but if you could try to avoid being exhaustive in case we have hundreds of applications, that would be appreciated as well. Um, will you be organizing a visit so the potential applicants can see the site? This is a great question. So on October the 3rd, we are going to organize a, a full day where um, people can come. The only reason that we haven't posted this yet is because I'm, we don't really know exactly how many people are going to show up and the site is quite small. So we don't want everyone to show up at the same time. So what we're going to try to do is set up an event break so we can have different time slots. Um, and that's just again because we don't in you know, in this kind of virtual world doing things in real life we want to make sure that it's um, done properly. So yes, October third is the date, and more details will be made available soon. That's a tough one. Um. Will on-street parking permit be able to be applied for? I was going to pass this to you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is <laughs> this is really up to our highways people. You can apply for it, but uh, chances are, in planning from a planning perspective, we would not, we definitely would not allow off-street parking. Uh, we can't stop someone from applying for a parking per permit. Uh, it is a highways issue rather than rather than a planning matter. Okay. Um, so somebody said, I've never owned a home and have struggled with rent in Hackney. I have just inherited a small amount of inheritance. Am I still eligible? Yeah, yeah, we don't have any uh, prerequisites around, you know, that. So yes, you're still eligible and, you know, how you fund your deposit is, that is entirely up to, uh, entirely up to you, how you fund the project and the, the funds that we kind of list as being needed, um, that is, yeah, up to you. Um. Will you submit a pack of information for from Thames Water, um, etc., or services on the website? Yeah, I think today is actually so. We had some issues with this um, where the web team had kind of uh, accidentally labeled them incorrectly. However, they now have been updated, so there should be water search information uh, along with a bunch of other surveys that are already on the site. Um, and if anyone has any difficulties, uh, just email the self-build at hackney.gov email address and we'll make sure that you can you can get them. And how will maintenance be managed, i.e. if you need to maintain something, does the council contribute? No. Simple. Um, 
Are there any other limitations to how many people can apply within one household other than the 90,000 earnings cap? Um, again, I would refer to the London Space Standards uh, and around how many people uh, you know, can live in a certain sized space. So, you know, there are, there are you know, two bed, I uh, should have no more than this many people more than a year. So that, that is kind of, I think what we would want to see, we wouldn't want to be encouraging overcrowding um, on such a small space. Yeah, just to clarify with that, uh, Josephine, uh, well, just to expand on Josephine, it is a, it's a table in the new, the proposed London plan. If you look at uh, table 3.1, for people are taking notes, is the minimum internal standards. And as Josephine says, you know, it depends on the number of stories it is, how many people. They go to like one bed, one person, one bed, two per people, and then uh, two bed, three people, uh, two bed, four, four people. And it, it uh, there's different uh, minimum sizes for, for one story, two story, three story. So it is a table in the London plan and uh, emphasize that these are minimum standards. That, uh, that they're advocating. The title plan seems to cover more than the site boundary. Does this mean we would own part of the garden next door? Go to Georgia. Um, the title, yes, the title plan actually goes across two titles registered titles, hence um, the actual plan that you're provided for the plots will be across two titles, hence um, you have to go on the actual plan of being provided in terms of the actual plot, but it will cross two titles which are both registered to the council. So um, we've got another question about local connection. Um, regarding the local connection with regards to suppliers and construction, are you literally asking for companies registered within Hackney or Greater London? I think what we would want to see is that when you are thinking about this, where possible, you're thinking about materials and potential, you're looking first at Hackney. And if you can't find something happening up here in Greater London, then I would expect that to be part of your application answer, where you could say, you know, we looked at an architect, let's say, and how can you go because of such and such. Um, but we would want to see that at least somewhere in your project, you are providing an opportunity for local people, local uh, suppliers, local tradespeople to be um, employed okay, in some way, unless you're going to do everything by yourself. But then we want we want to see that explicitly stated in the we'd be amazed, but we want to see it explicitly stated in your in your answer to that question. And how would you ensure that applicants do fit the criteria and aren't just taking advantage of this opportunity? Really good question. Um, we will make sure that all of the shortlisted applicants um, meet the criteria by going through and speaking with. Um, the same way that we check on share ownership, we have uh, our own kind of private diligence. Um, we will ask for certain financial documents to make sure that they line up with what you say you earn. Um, yeah, we'll do certain kinds of credit checks and we will do legal checks as much as we can to make sure that people don't already own and also uh, hopefully be in contact with the mortgage provider to cross reference. And make sure that you're not paying second home stamp duty and also saying that you're um, a yeah a household that doesn't own a home already. And um, if you provide personal information regarding your circumstances, would this be kept confidential? Yes, this will be kept confidential. And 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 we will get rid of it as soon as it's no longer necessary for the challenge. That's the end of the question. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure if anybody else that's watching has any more questions they want to send in. Yeah, I mean, if anyone has any questions that aren't covered, I would just encourage them to again send a, an email to self-guild at hackney.gov.uk before the 5th of October. 
and we will make sure to come back all at one time by mid-October with all the answers. And even if you didn't ask the question, we're still going to try to send you the information so that everyone has the same information at the same time. So that's what we're planning to do for all bidders. Um, but yeah, I, I think just uh, now is just a time to say thank you for tuning in on, on a Monday night and spending an hour and 17 minutes hearing about our challenge. We, we really hope you will apply. And um, yeah, thank you for taking the time. Okay, we're going to sign off now. Thank you, Carol. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Take care. Bye.